Man, thank you for agreeing to um to come on. Like I want to talk to you about hip hop, but before we start talking about hip hop, you know, I want to talk to you about some other things because I, I admire you, you know, and everything that you stand for. You know, beyond an artist, you're a philanthropist, you're um you you know, you're a leader in my eyes, you're an activist, and you know, I re I really appreciate everything that you're doing in the community, brother. So Oh man, that's that's humbling. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for thinking those those kind of thoughts and seeing me in that light, you know what I mean? Like, I, hey, you know what I was telling somebody the other day? Man, the only thing I see myself as is healing from hurt. And like, when you healing, when you healing from hurt, like anybody that you see that's successful, anybody that you see that you admire, the, 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 the depth of your admiration is, is the depth of the trauma that they've experienced to look like that in your eyes. And so it's like, so it's it's kind of <laughs> like, you know, bro. It's touching, man. I, I thank you. I, I thank you for appreciating me through my hurt. You know what I'm saying? And through, <laughs> and through my heal and through my healing process and, and recognizing, you know what I'm saying? All right, bro, got a glow, like beyond just rap. It's a glow, yeah. man. So so that man, that's the type of thing that like I pray to be like that, bro. I pray to be like that, bro. Thank yeah. you. I'm striving. Yeah. Well, yo, you you definitely did. Like one one of the things I want to ask you to start with is that you know I think in Chicago gets a lot of press on the national scene for all the violence and everything that occurs in um in Chicago, but to me there's not enough national press in terms of what brothers such as yourself are doing to help try to save youth. You know, um, so I was just wondering, just like from your perspective, like what are some of the organizations outside of your organization? that may be doing things in Chicago that people on the national scene don't know about because, you know, I watch YouTube, you know, I look at Instagram and there's, to me, there's a lot of YouTubers and people on Instagram that have all these different opinions about everything that's going on in Chicago. But realistically to me, they think locally, meaning wherever they are geographically and they don't see the bigger picture because they're not actually in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, Man, thank you for asking that. That's a beautiful, very intelligent question, bro. Uh, there, there are groups like Iman Central on 63rd Street. What they did was it's it's a it's a Islamic organization, and what they did was um, all the Arab stores that were selling alcohol, bad meat, you know, honey buns and chips right. in the morning, kids, mm. you know, bad, you know, because we let some of these areas are food deserts. Which mm, leads right. to the type of stuff you see because right. it's malnutrition, bro. Right. Malnutrition, bro, is the whole everybody like me. We need more jobs. We need more <laughs> boy. You need more help. You, need more you know what I'm saying? Like you you won't even feel like that. You know what I'm saying? With more nutrition. So Iman Central may uh they got jobs programs, veterans programs, bro. They made all the Arab liquor stores put bananas, fresh fruit, and produce from the communities in their stores. So if you're going to buy a beer, man, you also got the option of a banana, bro. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so I applaud the work of Iman Central. You got, um, oh, man, so many Mayafa on the west side where they work with returning citizens. You know what I mean? People returning from incarceration, mm. and they get them jobs. They get them uh, uh, um uh, 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 my alpha, they get them uh, uh, training and carpentry and, and stuff, right. hands on work. And and I just did a trip, uh, the year of return to Ghana with wow. the my alpha program where they took these brothers that ain't never been nowhere out the neighborhood to Africa. Nice. And I saw these brothers' eyes open yeah. and I saw them discover a piece of themselves that right. they didn't know exists in the motherland. So there are people in Chicago doing stuff, but to your point about what you see about Chicago, mm -hmm. hey man, I know we, we, we like to cling our hands and wring our hands, but realize that's just a part of the act of the show, bro. That shit is for sale. Mm -hmm. Look at the shot. Look at Chirac. Look at mm -hmm. all of these things that are making money off of a portrayal of people's trauma and mm -hmm. pain. And they and they they don't talk about how they get up and go to work or get up and go to school or struggling because you know what I'm saying they're getting so many tickets from the city. They don't talk about the top down 
They only talk mm -hmm. about what the bottom is doing. Yep, that's a fact. You know fact. what I'm saying? And so they selling that shit, bro. You know, look, I say this even about rappers that I love in Chicago. Man, keep singing Death Chance for the Devil. It's no wonder your people getting killed. Don't you know how powerful music is? Don't you know Maya Angelou said what you say is coming to look for you? Yeah. Don't you know, bro? Don't you know, bro? Oh when, you, when we write words, bro, we spell it. When we speak them, we cast in a spell. Mm -hmm. When you speak death chants, death becomes you. Yeah. Let's talk about them crystals, bro. I know you rock crystals, man. What's going on over there, good brother? I know you got the good brother crystal, too, good brother. <laughs> hey, yo, okay. I hope I ain't going too far with that, All though, right, bro. Nah, I, yeah. I know exactly where you're going, and I like the trajectory in which you're going because, they, like we said, man, we, we admire you so much. There's so many things... I can action. I know you touch base on because you're a broad mind, man. You're a great mind. And I love, right. I just love hearing you talk. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to get something hearing you talk because you're, 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 yeah. you're, you're as clear as a glass of water when you speak. And I appreciate that. So let me tell you about the crystals because even those have meaning, right? Like, I don't wear jewelry because to me it look good. I wear it to mm -hmm. sum up my personal power because of what it means. So right. like this right here, this is called Moldavite. This is a 60 million year old meteorite that crashed into the earth 60 million years ago. And, and over millions of years, it mixed with earth. So it's green and it's black, like tectite and earth. And, wow. and so I, all I wear in terms of crystals is mold. Boy, let me see. Mold uh, let me get in there. Right, yeah, Moldavite, you know what I'm saying? And like, um, I wear that so that I can stay cosmically grounded. I wear right. that so I can have out of this world experiences and that's never right. get knocked off this earth. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. That's right. And I, you know, I, I, I got this is the the Centron stone right here. And you I love that Centron, bro. Man, this is this is deep, man. This keeps this keeps me focused. It keeps it keeps that wicked energy away from me too. I, I'm, I'm usually home by myself, walking, just meditating. Doing my thing and I keep this real close. So I'm in the crystals too, man. God bless you, bro. Come on, man. And it's like like this, this spider that I wear. Let me see that. This spider that I wear, bro. I was watching this nature show and I saw how the spider it weaves this web that's so beautiful and strong. And then it, it sit back and wait and let life come to it. It ain't trying to chase nothing, steal nothing, angle nothing. It mm -hmm. spins its own web and wait for life. And I was like, shit, if I could be like that spider, if I could shoot my gift, shoot my love, shoot my effort, <laughs> shoot my kindness and generosity, and sit back and let life bring it to me, bro. That's why I, that's how I learned to stop chasing shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me let me ask you this. Do you do you believe that it's important for people that I'm gonna say quote unquote make it to continue to keep living in the same community? that they um they originated from and if so why i used to think that real heavy like i used to really believe that real heavy and now as you know i've been doing some world traveling um i'm spending a lot of time in wyoming and chicago with the trumpers and the ultra liberal <laughs> you know and like so my view of what should be is expanding you know what i'm saying and like Man, bro, first you got to be comfortable in your own body. I think a lot of us want to lead a neighborhood because we think the neighborhood is what our problem is. Mm -hmm. Like, that that ain't your problem. You know what I'm saying? And right. so right. I, I still got my grandmama house on 79th Street on the 9 because mm -hmm. I can be anywhere at any given time and feel comfortable, and I ain't got to lead that space to expand into this space that we in in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to leave Chicago to have land in Africa. You know what I'm saying? I think that sometimes we limit it like we can only be one place at a time. You can be all places at any time That's as right. long as you comfortable with who you are. Mm -hmm. So so when you go home, you can hold your head up because you took care of your people. Because you, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you... you 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 of service when people ask you like bro i ain't trying to lead nothing in chicago you know what i tell people what do you need me to do 
<laughs> Where do you want me to be? I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just of service, so I can always be at the crib. Then my that's my village. But hey, don't expect me to be stuck, trapped. You know what I'm saying? Or don't get me confused. Like I'm all I am is this body that you're looking at. I could be anywhere at any given time. Yeah. How do we get though? How do we get brothers to expand that perspective though? Like you said, you know, you took a there was a trip where a bunch of dudes had an opportunity to go to Ghana. And you know, when you have those kind of experiences, sometimes those are like those those real wake-up calls that show people that there is life beyond just the block. But what else can we do for the people who may not have those resources to expand and broaden their horizons? Have them sign up for Arts and Culture Inc. That's what they needed. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes we think resources is what it takes when you are the resource. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That's you are right. the resource. That makes perfect sense. Like, we look at it like if I could get money, I can then do. I think that's a backwards philosophy of how to live your life. Right. Mm -hmm. It started without money right now. It don't even need to <laughs> yeah. yeah. It starts with the thought. And it's, you know, and that kind of means. And the effort. And the effort. And the effort. You got to work for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you got to walk toward it and live your life like that's what you want. Like, a lot of us say we want certain things. But then we so distracted with the other yeah. thing, you know, I just feel like we don't even really, if you distracted by that other thing, maybe that's what you want. Do that. Right. Make, that's make cognitive choice. dissonance. That's cognitive dissonance at its finest, you know. And then sometimes people, I think the things that people think they want, they say it because they think that that's what other people want to hear. It's not what they really want. So if your actions don't reflect, if your actions don't reflect what it is that you actually want, it's like what you said, what you're doing. What you're doing is what you actually want. That's, that's what and, you and, and, and what we do, we look outside of ourselves. Yes, sir. And, and, and comparison is the killer of your creativity, right? So Say, that look out. Say that one more time, bro. Comparison <laughs> is the killer of your creativity. Mm -hmm. I can tell you a story that a shaman taught me on a mountain about that. But instead, I'll just keep it short. And I tell y'all, like, we constantly looking outside and, and making excuses for why we cannot. So, man, they got money. If I had that kind of money, man, they got, they, they, they rap that new style. If I can rap that new style, like, yo, bro, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, <laughs> untangle that shit, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's you you are the god you are the resource bro yeah. and like and so and, and everything else is just programming that's it and it's funny that's what they call it too man when you're watching television they call it a program yeah but is that's it? what we do we looking at we looking at social media which is a hyper program right and we oh my god miss and disinformation you know what I'm saying? Going crazy. And we don't have a spiritual grounding to even be able to discern who we are in the mix of these universes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, man. And we and we just we just aimlessly just float out there in space. Not have it with no destination at all. You know, I was I was going through some your your your, your uh, Instagram and I and I chimed in on a little conversation. I was wondering what you was having, the conversation you was having with Jay Electronica. What was that little dialogue about? And I and I mentioned to you that you know wisdom is better than silver or gold. And you gave me back an African proverb that said, "African said, well, keep your wisdom. Give me back my silver and gold." <laughs> <laughs> like that, son. But, yeah. but what, what's it like being across the illustrious man? Two great minds, just so. Jay Electronica, I could imagine what y'all was talking about. Jay Electronica only visits this realm. And so some people like him, like Kanye, like a few other people I know, you have to talk to them from the world they live in. Correct. And it don't mean it ain't a real world. It right. just ain't always <laughs> this one. And they bring you information. You love them so much because they bring you information from another realm, from another galaxy, from another timeline. 
That's they right. are people visiting these bodies right now. And so right. when we talk, we talk within the timeline. We could be talking about anything in the universe, multiverse. Okay. We talk about, bro, we talk about how a tree is a multiverse. And, and if we were wise, we would be like a tree. It has roots underground that connects to every other community. So it's rooted in a community. That tree drops seeds that grows fruit. It takes care of bugs with sap that comes down. Birds get to nest in it. If you were like a tree, you would be like a great grandfather that takes care of everybody in the family, that's worked hard, that reaches to the sky, but's planted in hell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Grew, grew from hell to heaven. That's how we talk, like holy men, like griots, like sages, like poets to one another. Yes, we, so. we, we speak in poetry to each other. Yeah, you speak in, you speak in scripture, man. I can imagine yeah. the dialogue you guys got. Yeah, so. and, we, and we know all the scriptures, so if you get it wrong, <laughs> somebody going to be like, ah, wait a minute. You need <laughs> that, that though. Dope. You need, yeah, you need that. You need that. I, I, was, yeah. I was looking on your Instagram also, and I, I wanted to make sure I have it correct. There was a post you had where you were talking about genius. And your position on it was that a genius can't be defined in the time of their life. Can you expand that on uh, expand on that a little bit? Because I, I agree with your um, premise. Do you think that because time is needed for people to understand the impact of an individual um, or an individual's contributions? Is that why you believe? Yeah, because the contribution has to be so great that it stands the test of time. Mm hmm. So until we get to a point that we can even calculate, now we can make bets, right, on people that have changed the course of human history during their lifetime, like Einstein, like Michael Jackson, like, right. you know what I'm saying, like like Henry Ford, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, or the Wright brothers. Like, th like those inventions change how humans, it evolved us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the yeah. Stevie Wonder makes music that makes plants move and grow. Like there's something that I'm willing right. to bet is genius. However, you know, man, G Jesus got like Jesus got two twenty five hundred years in. How long? <laughs> like, are you looking at what you're doing? Like, how much time are you putting on the clock? Mm -hmm. That's genius. Yeah. Do you, you believe a person could be? Um self uh self anointed genius because i've heard many people say well i'm i'm a genius so i'm genius so is the concept of genius does that need to be bestowed upon somebody uh no nah, you are what you think you are you are what you believe you yourself to be however the thing about genius is you kind of have to live inside of a prison to be it and everybody is not willing to do what it takes to be genius. It's not that we don't all have or can't be. It's how in tune are you? Right. How, how, how willing are you to isolate yourself? Like, you know, like even if you're in society, bro, go look at the documentary on Beethoven. He was the, one of the most loved musicians that was so alone and was going deaf and had to come on bro play and his best stuff came when he lost his hearing mm -hmm. think about the, the the trauma and pain of what it takes to genius ain't smart mm -hmm. genius is is remarkable it's amazing man it's yeah you you bringing something from the other uh, you a portal bro mm -hmm. talk about that yeah you know what i think also to me helps capture the essence of a genius to be a genius i think you have to be willing to accept some level of ridicule. And the reason why I say is because often the people who are found to be genius or believe they're genius, they're doing things that's unpopular or not believed by other people. You know, like when the Wright brothers say, we're gonna make this 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 device or we're gonna create an airplane so you could travel through the air, I would imagine people probably looked at them crazy. Like, you wanna do what? Well, what? You talking about flying in the air? So I think the ability to be able to take that risk, like that, that to me, that's what sets apart. A person that's a genius versus somebody else. Like I look at the dudes now that they, that they throw genius around. You hear Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and 
You know, and honestly, I don't know. I think they're trying to push the culture forward, but I don't know if I would bestow the title of genius on them yet. Well, well, let me ask you this. Would you say that the Wright brothers are, were genius? The guy or whoever created the airplane, was that person a genius? I would say so. I would. And I don't okay. base it on, I wouldn't I wouldn't base it on their intellect. I would say so because I think that they created I think they created something that helped to advance us as people and something that over time it's evolved to something bigger than what they initially believed probably could be. Like I, I, I imagine that initially they thought we were gonna create an aircraft that would fly. I don't think that they thought that we, they'd create an aircraft or there'd be a time that there would be an aircraft that would be able to fly around the world. Or now we're talking about aircraft that could go from New York to London in a matter of a couple of hours. So yeah, I would, I would say that, that <laughs> I categorize them as genius. Okay, so my, my thing to that though is uh genius is beyond what they Intellect. were thinking all they were thinking about was purpose um but i'd also say that you know bro i i think that sometimes we get caught up with identity with saying like is this person this? Is that person that? How can we tell right now? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I've always, I think one of the reasons I'm not bigger as an artist is because I refuse to really buy in to a fixed identity. Right. And I don't think Einstein cared about that. Look, look, Mr. Rogers to me was a genius. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we, we want to define it, but like, Mr. Rogers, bro, he was like a saint, and he he revolutionized children's television for education. So 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 before Mr. Rogers, you had Tom and Jerry, you had violent cartoons, the portrayals, bro. Remember, all we are is the programming that we're made up of. You're very rarely are people in any different they receive and especially as children mr rogers came along bro when i was in the ghetto bro think about it i'm growing up in the hood bro like i'm seeing like folks and vice lords and bad examples of shit and this man was on tv saying how long is one minute let's sit here and count nigga that was meditation that was my first that was my first spiritual experience bro mm -hmm. <laughs> like consciously mr rogers is is one of the one of the only white men i can honestly say i admire mm. mr rogers calmed children down he spoke inside of people bro you know what i'm saying bro like the thing that you saying you see in me that you like man i love your your glow bro mm -hmm. nigga i'm i'm studying masters like mr rogers mm. That's yeah. why I can be in Wyoming and be black as Nat King Cole, because I'm also very <laughs> calm and I smile and I. You know, I'm, <laughs> oh man! Did you did you see the Mr. Rogers uh, movie with Tom Hanks? Bro, I've been studying Mr. Rogers since I was a kid. Like studying, bro, the fact that he was he studied to be a priest but left the priesthood. He was like, I ain't with this shit over here. Kind of left it and was like, I'm a. I'm gonna do my own work for the Lord. He was so disciplined, bro. Like, like, and he did it through television. Mr. Rogers was so, I mean, you know, he was back in the day, but our, when Arsenio Hall was popping with his show, he had to have Mr. Rogers on. Mm -hmm. But with a crowd like that, Mr. Rogers, he'll come and be like, can we just be quiet for 10 seconds? <laughs> and make the whole crowd like, bro, that shit is woosah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> bro, him, Bruce Lee, they were the same yeah. people with two different powers. Train like yo, 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 Ron Fest, you'll appreciate this. My partner Rob is big on imagination. And to me, Mr. Rogers is like one of the people that actually taught kids in the hood how to how to be able to tap into their imagination. Come on, bro. 
you you know that superpowers. Mm -hmm. You know, bro. Anybody on TV, like, let's imagine. Let's go to the neighborhood of make believe, bro. Mm -hmm. That's how you get out the hood. Like, bro, that's where <laughs> raps come from, bro. He was a white man tapped in. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. I'm I, trying I, to get tapped in, bro. Like, I bro, we, we be in the Peruvian jungles with the with the plant medicine. We be out in West Africa, bro. We looking at land, like how we gonna get this land and build art schools, bro. I ain't got no money. You got that imagination though. I got fucking imagination. <laughs> <laughs> and that's unlimited, another. unlimited and abundant. That's one Come on, things, bro. That's one of the things I always ask artists and anyone that comes on this show because I want to highlight that more. I want adults to believe in imagination much more. It's not just for children. It's also for us. And it's, bro, it's, it's, that's it's, the Holy Spirit. That's the power that God gave you to manifest. If you can't visualize, let's just call it visualize. If you can't visualize, imagine, see, have sight, be on sight, You'll never have wisdom. You'll never have abundance. You'll never have, bro. All you gonna do is what they tell you to do, nigga. All day, all day, <laughs> like, like and that, and be trapped in a matrix and stuck there. I wanted to ask you, man. Did you get an opportunity to watch the verses with the locks and Dipset? Yes. Let me ask you this: What did you think? Oh, hold on. I got my question somewhere there. What were your thoughts on the Locks' performance and how important how important is craftsmanship being as though your organization, Art of Culture, has a class in performance and, and, and stage performance and all that? Man, the question you asking, bro, it's only one thing. It's called preparedness. Mm -hmm. It's called somebody came and thought, Oh, we just gonna be up here and have fun, and and then somebody else took their craft seriously right. and prepared, and it showed. You know what I'm saying? And that's all. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, I think some people think young and old is it's, it's being willfully ignorant. I'm just gonna use pure momentum and watch. I'm so great, like I can freestyle through it. That's how the that's how the white schools beat the black schools in athletics all the time. The black schools are more powerful, more talented players. The white schools be more organized. So the white high school win the football game. Yo, you know something? The last, <laughs> the last episode we had this podcast, we we broke down the verses and we talked about this. And the the, you, the shit you just said, I said to a T. I said I played on sports teams. We were far more athletic and we were better than other teams and other teams beat us just because they were more prepared. And we, we try to rely solely on our athleticism. Like I think preparedness and professionalism is so underrated, especially in our culture. And I don't know why the hell, why aggressiveness never wins a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, the counter punch this way to, to an undefeated record. Come on, man. Come on. But, yo, I don't, I, I don't consider Mayweather a champion. Mm, why is that? Because I think you got winners. You got uh, quitters. But we don't talk about quitters because quitters quit. And then you got champions. And you got, you know, a winner. A winner is somebody who wins all the time. Like, Floyd Mayweather wins. He's a winner. Mm -hmm. But a champion, bro? You got to get knocked out. You got to mm -hmm. lose. You got to get, you got to get, I mean, and I can't speak for your personal life, but I'm just saying professional. Right. Like I saw what happened to Muhammad Ali. By the time he beat George Foreman, he was the champ. Like I saw what Mike Tyson had to go through. You know what I'm saying? In and out the ring. And, 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 and like, but I even think Mike Tyson became a champion after his boxing days was done. I agree. That's when he he the champ now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like he's in the, that's right. Yeah. So so to me, my definition of champion, Floyd Mayweather ain't been through what champions been through to call themselves that yet. Because you win. Are you so you talking about what like resilience or redemption? Perseverance. Mm. Yeah, going through something and, going through, and coming out, and then and then. Going through it, falling, losing—you gotta fail, you gotta lose, mm -hmm. losing, 
and then rising up and conquering the whole board. Oh shit, you a champ. Yeah. It's something you know, it's something to be said behind that because I think a lot of people don't realize you learn so much from failing. If you're smart, you learn a lot from failing. But I think that if you look at like to use Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather is an example of somebody who probably was fearful of losing. So a lot of the fights that he took, he took those fights under the under the premise of that he was favored to win and you know he performed and he won those fights. But in failure, there is an opportunity for people to actually learn from if you're open, if you're open to actually learning, because I think that's another issue that we have. I don't know if we know how to I, I don't I think that we equate like you almost like what you were saying with winning. I think that we equate all of our success aligned with winning. There are people that I think that have accomplished success and failure that, you know, that they they set out to do something and it didn't intend on how they thought it would come out. And as a result of it, a better circumstance manifested itself. I mean, yo, you think about it, the pharmaceutical industry is built on that. There are, there, there are drugs that people create that supposedly do something specific. It doesn't do that, but they like, yo, these are the side effects of it. Before you know it, that drug then becomes, well, this is now the drug <laughs> of choice for whatever, whatever it is. And that wasn't built out of what the original plan was. That was built out of failure. You know, I think it's just how people, how people are, are able to kind of shift the narrative and pivot from from what initial what the initial thing was. A lot of I said words are powerful, man. They mm -hmm. cast spells all the time, man. Using words. Got people believing things they shouldn't believe, man. Yeah, and that, and, and I don't know no other way to learn other than to fail. Mm -hmm. Like, so when you learning, you don't come in knowing how to do karate. You know what I'm saying? You you learn some moves, then you go out there and get kicked in the face. Then they be like, "All right, <laughs> like come back at it." And then before you know it, you like, "Man, I'm pretty good at karate," but you had to get kicked in the face. And all times. learning processes have failure and difficulty that is a part of learning and that's what makes somebody like elon musk warren buffett jeff bezos jay-z kanye you name it nas what makes them so great is that they keep putting themselves up to learn more and more yeah. in the public eye yeah it's it's a difficult concept i think the grass like i, I i'm a college professor and I teach undergrad students. And one of the things that I constantly have to remind them of is about the process of learning. Like everybody tells me when the semester starts, I'm a 4.0 student. If they get an assignment wrong, they want opportunities to continue to redo the assignments so they get perfect scores. So I find myself constantly attempting to remind them like, look, remember what you, what you enrolled in college for. You enrolled in college to learn, but Somewhere along the lines, it shifted from being about the learning experience to more so about if I could, if I graduate from college, I'm going to make more money or my status is going to change. And people just completely have moved away from this is an opportunity for you to learn. This is a process where you can, you, you know, you gain knowledge that potentially you didn't have before. And it, it just that's like an ongoing struggle every semester. Well, let, me, let me let me let me let me I'll go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to ask you a question about the education, the, you know, academia. Mm -hmm. and maybe the problem is they paying for something and they want their receipt. And it's like, I don't care if I learn or not. I want the receipt for what I'm paying for so I can move on and go do this other thing. Oh, right. and maybe, maybe the problem is education being for sale. Like information should not be for sale mm -hmm. at high price, good information. Mm -hmm. And because it's for sale, it attracts a certain kind of person. You of know course. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like you know, um, I remember recently about three years ago, right after we had did Glory and I, we had won an Oscar 2017, I applied to go to college. Cause I was like, man, if I could get a music science degree mm -hmm. with this right. Oscar, oh man. <laughs> and when I applied, you UIC sent me a letter like, nah, you don't qualify to get in our school. And mm -hmm. in my mind, I said, bitch, I could teach your school. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't even know. Right. Like, okay, okay. And I realized like, 
this education I'm getting right now, bro, I went to Ireland, lost my passport, and had to stay there for five days and learn more about what Damn. was going on with the IRA than I ever did in school. Wow. I just going through Africa, I'm learning more about what's real and what ain't mm -hmm. than I ever would just scrolling YouTube. Like, bro, it but YouTube is also good. YouTube is the new library. So it's mm -hmm. like schools better catch up. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like on one hand, I agree with you about the character of people mm -hmm. that have these ex expectations, like how not to learn or how mm -hmm. to cheat or curb learning. <laughs> but like on another hand, it's because we sell information that makes us all so terrible. Right. <laughs> it's look, academia is definitely customer service oriented. You know, like there's conversations that happen with deans and vice presidents and presidents of universities and all that stuff. And it's what you said. Like a lot of times the students feel that they're paying for, you know, I'm, I'm paying for a service and the end what result should be that I should have this paper. But the other thing is that that paper shouldn't really define who you are as a person. Like there are dudes that I'm not, yo, no bullshit. And there are dudes that I know that probably have only graduated from junior high school, that their level of intelligence exceeds people with doctorate degrees. But people get so roped into believing that I have to have this document. This document tells me that I'm somebody. That document doesn't tell you that you're somebody. You know what that document tells me? That you committed four years of your life to education or six years of your life to education. And that's, that's, that's not to diminish a commitment of such or the financial element that goes with it. But that doesn't, that does not, mean that you have superior intellect to somebody that did not go to college you know yeah. so. who teaches us that though who teaches us that where were we taught that the document defined us well you know who told us that <laughs> and europeans the europeans slid in there right along with the cookie <laughs> you slid it right in there man I, you know and this and this is why a lot of times i do give i i give praises and, and, and credit to the nation because you know I grew up I grew up under a lot of five percent nation of Islam man and the first degree is knowledge man you have to have that you have to walk around with your student hat on everywhere you go you're supposed to acquire knowledge knowing where you are having knowledge itself um that's that's the most important thing why how do you feel about knowledge itself Ron well shit who is self? Great. That's a great question. I mean, I guess I'm asking you, like, who is self to have knowledge of? Self, self, self is the awareness of one being very aware of his surroundings and the things he has going on, the things that he's, that he's, that he put me on the spot. <laughs> So we, we, think about it, because we say these things, we say these things, and no, we no, expect no, each no. other to believe in these things. Like, what are, what is this stuff? Self, self is the, the, the totality of all things that you can do, manifest, and, and, and create, and, and, and pull out of yourself to make what it is that we see the world for what it is now. Everything you see in front of you came from a thought of mm -hmm. one individual, or maybe a myriad of individuals collectively, but... You, you know and having knowledge of yourself, you, you, you at least have the control. You, you're behind, the, you're, you're the commander in control. You know how to do and, what, and what, how things are supposed to be made and, and laid out. So now, so, so with that definition, I would say that process takes a lifetime to, to master. By the time you master it, you'll be dead. Hmm. And, and and so, but physically, it, physically yeah, physic. But if you're trying to master it, if you're working at that, it will be exampled in the way you walk, and the way you carry yourself, and in the way life responds to you. That's right. And that's and that's what you know. I, I guess that's what we're trying to teach our children. Like I'm trying to tell my daughter, like, yo, if you dance like that, like I tell my daughter, up, down, side to side, no circles for now like if you like if you if you wear that baby if you do that this is how life is gonna respond to you i can't make you not you know what i'm saying i ain't telling you don't wear that i'm just saying you know master the res the responses you get 
put out what you want back consciously. Don't don't get nothing back you don't want because you was what are you you know where's your mind at? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like how do we teach our kids that? If you if you pop a lot of this in Chicago with the violence mm -hmm. is drug related, but not drug related like in the 90s or 80s where we was shooting up each other blocks for who was gonna sell drugs. Mm -hmm. This is drug addicts that mm -hmm. are children. 15, 16, they, they, they the nicest kids. But then when they pop them Adderalls or them, whatever the hell is in that, bro, when they pop that, you can't recognize them. They turn into something else. Damn. You know what I mean? The worst parts of they self. Wow. And, and they do things that when they come out of it, they didn't even realize they did. And so, and so how do we teach knowledge of self when the village is all cracked up? broke up chasing money check man let them get it like we don't we don't see the connection between each other we bro we don't got compassion for one another no more mm -hmm. that's right that's right yeah like knowledge itself come from a, a i bro i i bet i could ask each one of y'all who was y'all teacher who taught you how are y'all like how y'all are now and y'all could point me to some of the greatest teachers that this earth has has ever spit up. Man, some of these kids ain't got no mama or no daddy. How they gonna have knowledge itself? Yeah. Or got mamas and daddies that for, for four generations didn't know who they was. Or even know what that means. Some people know, some people on, don't bro. know that they don't know. Yeah. The, they, bro, they whole program is get money, get money, get money, get money, and do what? Like, oh, we ain't got nothing after that. <laughs> oh, man. I, I read somewhere that your motto is true power is the power. True power is the power to empower others. Can you break that down for us? What does that mean to you? What does that look like? <sighs> the more you give, the more powerful you look. <laughs> like... <laughs> That that sounds now that sounds like in the world of academia. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't nobody yeah. powerful that ain't that ain't provided some jobs and some food. Mm -hmm. How about that? Oh man. So game. what does what does a leader look like to you? Then what does it mean to be a leader in our in our communities where we come from? What's a leader look like? It's what a leader looks like and what a leader is. Tell me you both. Know what I'm Tell me both, brother. In Tell our in our community, a leader look like one patriarchal religious uh dogmatic one way of doing things come on i'm the charismatic leader and i'm strong <laughs> a real leader or or let's not just say patriarchal because now more women are in power let's be for real mm -hmm. and it ain't like women can't be bad leaders too even though they got a better leadership style because their style of leadership is more community community then right. you know but they be stealing money too you know what i'm saying <laughs> and so like you know like to me a leader is he who is willing to carry the burden of service mm. for and, and can carry that burden for a large group of people whoever can carry the burden of service for a large group of people That's that true. look like a leader to me so let me ask so let me ask you I'm sure you see online like the kind of heat that does that like, make sense? Yeah, oh, it makes yeah, sense. definitely, definitely does. Also, so, so I'm sure you see online the kind of heat that Tamika Mallory gets and that my song gets for their Until Freedom movement, which I think is often confused with Black Lives Matter. You know, what do you say to them in the context of what you just said around leadership? Like, because they get that despite the work that we see them doing, you look at their comments, all this is your this is your money grubbers. You want you 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 just trying to trying to manipulate people. Your service is is not what you claim it to be. Like what do you say to those folks? Well, we don't care about money when the capital is taking it. But boy, don't let no don't <laughs> let no activists get paid. <laughs> but Jay Z got a billion dollars and it's oh we want to be like him. Like, <laughs> we some niggas, boy. So like you know, niggify. So you know, I I just look at it like that. Like you know. Number one, activists should get paid for they they work. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be balling out 
super gazillionaires, but then maybe they just become a philanthropist. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. It's okay. Um, but, but I also look at it like one of my greatest teachers is the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Mm. Love, I love him. I love him. He told me, he said, I said, man, why you don't pass the torch? That's how we met, me challenging him. Why you don't pass the torch? He said, what torch is there other than the one you light? There you go. Your own, your own torch. See? There you go. What you want, what you want other than what you did. I said, well, because I thought I was smart. Dr. King passed you the torch. You did Operation Bread Basket, da, da, da. You know, and, 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 and you know, who you who you putting in charge? Uh, he said, why don't you become a student? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's cold. Sun me, bro. Sun me. And guess what? What Jesse Jackson suffers from right now is a fighter's disease. Mm -hmm. He got the same thing Muhammad Ali had, bro, mm -hmm. where he losing his speech and like this. Oh, wow. Tamika Mallory is going to have a fighter's disease. That's what I think about it. Mm -hmm. I think that you, when you enter those type of experiences that, 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 that she's entering, mm -hmm. the, the larger your ability to serve, the larger the resistance will be. Yeah, right. that makes sense. Bro, you can't have yang without yin. You can't have Birds flying without sky behind it. You can't have like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like wow. as great as you gonna be is as great as your challenge is. The height of your success, the, the 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 depth of your failure is the height of your success. Yeah. The thing is though that I don't I don't get that people don't understand. If the bag was that easy to get, then you know everybody be doing it. Well, you know, at that point though, for her, you can't care what nobody say. Mm -hmm. You just got to do the work. That's what I like about her, too. Period. And she do the work. Mm -hmm. You can't front. So, all right. Can you show the, the fruits of your, like, you know, what's the guy's name? Um, The the, the scam guy to say he related to uh Frederick Douglass, the professor. Well, oh, 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 I know you said, um, is it Tariq Nasheed? Oh, Umar Dr. Johnson. Umar, Umar. yeah. Dr. Yeah. Umar. <laughs> Umar. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so when you be like, I, right, he get on and he talk about all these kids he helped and all these families, where they at? Mm. Where are the fruits? Yeah, where, yeah, where I hear you. You, you got to go to Delaware and see the school. You got to go to Delaware, right? Then he say he building a school, the Marcus Garvey. Yo, where are the fruits, bro? <laughs> if somebody asks Ryan Fest to show the fruits, I can show the fruit. That's the Tamika can said. show the fruit. Show and prove, yo. Show and prove. Bro, yo. that's all that matter. If you I don't care how much you getting, if you can show the fruit of your labor. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, he's been raising money for a school for a long time now. Oh, oh. man, come on, man. It's a school <laughs> of hard knocks. <laughs> oh, man. Talk a little bit about OG philosophy, man. I think that's a dope project you're working on with Black Thought and and Brian and um Brian Devine, man. Yeah, that song, that album that we working on, me. Well, you know, it's a lot of Raheem and Black Thought on it, but it's really an album I'm doing called Love Lessons, and it's kind of like, it's like Kanye shit, bro. Like I don't even know what date it would ever come out because it's come. The album is done, but I, I'm finishing a book called Love Lessons. It's coming with it, and the book is about the pain that black men go through and how black men process pain. The book is about what we've been talking about, failure. My wife walked out on me. I didn't even know I was losing her, bro, till she walked out. Like, we was good in the lie. It was the day I told the truth that she walked away. And then I had to learn more about who I was as a man. Like, how, damn, am I got people around me because I'm lying to myself? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I started being honest with myself in my life changed again this book is about me falling out with artists arguments you know what i'm saying and brotherhoods fracture and, and music because of the trauma of the music industry 
Right. And so I, I really want to finish this book before I let anybody hear this album. Mm. Let's go. Let's go. Can you, uh, what do you, what do you, go ahead, Rob. No, I, I was going to say, I think that's great to want to mend, mm -hmm. mend those relationships you probably that are probably broken because of misinformation and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and misperceptions and misunderstanding. But, you know, also, man, don't nobody think we feel pain, bro. Don't yeah. nobody, everybody think we so strong because we, we put up this, understand we put up persona. We put up this invincible persona half of the times in the ego mm -hmm. step. And, and you want everyone to, 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 to look at you like you are all right when you're not. I mean, not to put my business out there, I've been dealing with kidney disease for the last 10 years and nobody knows it. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, and I'm just going to wait for I had a friend call me yesterday. She's like, yo, Rob, how do you do it? Because you don't even look like you go out there, you play ball, you're walking the dogs, you, you do your, you do what you do, but you wouldn't even know it. I said, I got to keep the mindset that I have it already. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's my imagination. I already have a kidney. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and I, 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 that my imagination, I stay there. I don't go no place but there. That's beautiful, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's how that's how I get past it, man. I don't I don't I don't cry, I don't ask for no pity parties, none of that. Yeah. You know, and you know, you know another thing, man, like what what's been working with me, like more and more I'm just embracing the mystery of the unknown without yeah. tripping. Without yeah. tripping. Without without tripping. tripping. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, today is this. And I do what I can toward with something. And I don't worry about the rest. I did what I could. I did yeah. what I could. You know what I'm saying? Like I put that I put, you know, I put that amount of energy to it. I know exactly how much energy I put into it. And I leave it right there. I just let it go, man. Let it go, bro. Bro, let me tell y'all a story. So I'm in Senegal. And this dude was selling these birds. And the birds was crumpled up in the cage. They was discolored. And I asked my homie, hey, what kind of African scam is this, bro? I can't even get them birds through custom. <laughs> he said, man, you sound like a white person, like an American. Mm. I said, huh? He said, he called the guy over and called over a little kid. And he bought, he said, we buy these for a nickel and give them to the children to set free to show them that nothing should be in a cage. Mm. All I was thinking about was owning the bird, oh, yeah. taking it home. Like it wasn't white. pretty enough for me. Mm. Like a white man. Ooh. Thinking Ooh. like a white man. And so, <laughs> and so, and so I said, oh, I got to let stuff go, bro. I'm, ooh, I'm trying to own everybody and everything. Mm. I had to let, and boy, when I started that process, I'm at the, I'm at a point now where I'm even willing to let go of my life if that's what it is. Mm. So that because every day I'm working toward why I was put here. That's right. You know I mean? <laughs> if I die today, I ain't tripping because we did this. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Which which do you which do you prefer more? Do you prefer ghostwriting or being an actual performer? I, you know, I, I do got this thing I'll be saying now, like, yo, I'm the Holy Ghost writer. Uh, but, like, <laughs> you know. But, Wait, are, you, are you saying Ghost Rider make your shit tighter? No, oh, man. Now, you know, actually, a lot of my shit don't even get picked, bro. Like, my shit don't even get picked no more. My shit be like, all right, who else other than Ryan Fest got something? So, my shit be on the back burner. So, like, but, you know, like, but, but when I'm working with Kanye, I don't look at it like ghostwriting. Bro, I'm in there with a with Lil Yachty and Jay Electronica and Pusha T and Malik Youssef and like all these like incredible two chains and all and all and and I get to hit the karate bag. I'm mm -hmm. not even trying to get in the album no more, bro. I'm just trying to hit so the karate not. bag and stay in <laughs> stay in shape. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, because I really like rapping. Mm. So it really ain't nothing to me. Here we go with identity again. Are you a genius? Are you a, a ghostwriter? Are you a, like, right. bro, I'm just hitting the karate bag because music is therapy. Mm. There you go. This ain't even like, nigga, like, I, I get it. It's an opportunity for some of the other people. It's a huge opportunity that people work toward with all their life to get in that room and do that. 
Man, mm -hmm. I'm just privileged to have a scholarship to karate school. So I'm just there to like, if I can hit the bag at that level on rap and be in that NBA and that X-Men circle, uh -huh. oh, yeah. I'm okay. But yo, here's, here's the thing. Were you always there? Were you always there? Or is this a place that you've arrived to now? No, I was not always there because I had to learn grace. Mm. Because I was there, man, y'all know, you know, like me and Ye used to get into it, so, you know, like misunderstandings. And um, I didn't, I didn't know he was that famous. I didn't know you grow up with somebody and you don't see him like that. Mm -hmm. And by the time I look around, somebody had to say, bro, he ain't, the, that ain't 15 year old. Like, <laughs> bro, like, and then I had to look and be in Croatia and somebody tell me how Kanye changed their life mm. all the way over, you know, and, and be like, man, if I could just get this shoe. And and I'm like, wait, it ain't even, a, I'm making it about rap. It ain't even about rap. This dude is uh, something else. And I didn't, bro, I, I couldn't see it from the outside in. Mm. And so like, but I also felt like in a village. Mm. Family matters, and it's the only thing that can sustain us in times when vultures and outside invaders and bro, look, I'm talking to you. Talk, look, bro. Do I gotta yell at you in public to get you to hear what I'm saying? Shake your ass. Yeah, you you hear the public. I I had to learn, and so I used to say, God, please separate me from this person. God, please. Help me, and 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 <sighs> being so independent that I don't even need my brother. Mm -hmm. God, oh man, get this person as far away. And so, and, and somebody told me, man, they said, "Yeah, man, you, you, you got a problem. That's your problem, not not his." Somebody else is right. Mm -hmm. I said, "What you mean?" And he said, obviously, you and bro got a soul connection. Maybe you should deal with it with more grace. Mm. <laughs> and, and it was something about that combination of deal with it with more grace. Like, like, unless you are, unless you are responsible for everything in your life, you can't change nothing. Anything mm. that go wrong in your life is your fault. Mm-hmm. You, if you yeah. take that kind of a responsibility, you are already accountable. And mm -hmm. so I had to look at it like, wait, he not the problem. My perception is the problem. I was going, ooh, you just led to my next I try problem. to no, I try to tell people that all the time too. When you start blaming other people, you giving other people you trying to have an out and you give other people uh you create an excuse as to why the circumstance can't change. But if you take accountability, and you always change whatever the circumstance is. That's yes, true. that's that's a powerful word, accountability, man. Mm -hmm. For sure, Very powerful word, man. Man, do you think artists have a social responsibility to make records that don't promote cursing, violence, or sex? Anybody only has anybody only has the responsibility that they are held to. If hey bro, if your woman, if you if, look, it, you know, if your woman know you cheating and don't like, be like, how can we fix this or change this? Or if you know something that, bro, we not, we gotta hold it. It's like we have to be accountable for ourselves, but we also have to hold each other accountable for our values. Mm -hmm. I think that like. A lot of artists are not held to a communal standard of values. Right. So, you know, we like to blame the artists. We like to blame the, hey, man, is the girl that listened to the Ratchet song just as culpable? Like like the audience, the audience. And I, I'm not trying to blame nobody. I'm not placing blame. What I'm saying is, like, ignorance is something that, like, it needs participants. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it, it don't happen in a vacuum. Uh -huh. 
it, ignorance needs participants. Mm. If you participating, you participating. Uh, every only, and then it creates the yin, and it creates the push and the pull. It creates the the relationship. It creates the now I want to be that because that's what I like. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that's how ignorance work, bro. That's how everything works. You know, my, my position with that is I, I tell people also, I'm like, you know, if you if you have no interest in it, why do you listen to it? Why don't you just shut your radio off? But then people's defense is that, well, it's all over the place. It's on the, it's on the videos. We turn on the TV. You do you this. That. I'm like, bro, nobody nobody's making videos anymore. What do you watch videos at? Like MTV don't even show videos. BC don't show videos. But people just I think people are always looking for. Again, going back to accountability, looking for somebody else to blame That's for right. whatever, whatever the action or whatever the end result is. So it's easy, I think, to put the responsibility on the artist and say, well, if the artists were making music that didn't promote these things, we wouldn't have these issues. And me, I believe that art is to be consumed. Art is art. Like you could go to a museum and see a piece of art that I may look at and be like, "That's beautiful." Ron, you may look at it and be like, yo, that's vulgar, that's tacky, I don't like it, or whatever. It's all in how you process and how you accept what actual what the art is. So I kind of sometimes I'm like, I don't know how people get up in arms about the art that artists put out when the easiest thing to do is just don't consume the art. No, people are people are not see, but you calling things art that 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 are not that's not art, right? So, like, I'll give you an example. That's debatable. No, it ain't debatable. It ain't debatable. Like, let me tell you why. Why I don't believe it's debatable. Because some of it, they flat out say, this is capitalism. They flat out say, I'm doing music to get paid. So if somebody ain't calling themselves an artist, I ain't going to call them an artist. We put the name art on stuff that's just consumer products you know what i'm saying and like it, we act like we don't know the difference between communicating with the ancestors and i mean even if it's i ain't saying you can't do drill i ain't mm -hmm. saying you can't talk about whatever whatever you know what i mean you summoning spirits either way but i'm saying that like <laughs> if your only aim is capitalism man it's people like j electronica out here that I know is connected to art. Mm -hmm. I, bro, you got to keep in mind, I know Kanye. I, I I I work with an artist, you know what I mean? And I know when it's authentic and when it ain't authentic. Right. The only thing I would call art is authenticity, no matter what it is. Mm. There you go. That that wraps it, that, that wraps it up in a nutshell. Yeah. I, it, I think it's a nice way, I think, you know, I think it's a nice way of saying some of this shit is garbage. Consumable good. What 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 is a consumer good? It's just disposable. <laughs> I tell you what, no ID told. And, and it don't mean look, garbage had nutrients at one time. You used it before right. it became garbage. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you know, it's the difference between the stop sign and the Picasso, but they both painted by somebody. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. So I'm with you on that. Like, yeah, some of it is there are some people masquerading around as artists. That's a fact. <laughs> and, and just and really just painting a bunch of stop signs. <laughs> yeah, I like the way you say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, stop signs is dope. Like, look, bro. They need it. They need signs. it. They need you it. You know what I'm saying? They tell us what to do. They keep us out of danger. They direct us. They, you know, stop saying, I need a dance, right? You know what I'm saying? But that don't mean that that dance is particularly art. Is dance. Like, you know, but, I mean, it could be art. But, you know, the, I believe the Humpty dance was art, you know, so far. So, you know, like, but, you know, it could be anything. You know, the, the Get Money song. It make me feel like this when I exercise right now. Whatever the reason is that it, you consumed it. You'll be consuming something else just like it next month. Watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every what they say, it's a lid to every pot. Man, true, <laughs> true art stands the test of what? A time. A time. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we could, uh, you know what? I and I said this is a longer conversation, but I wish that for um for hip hop that we had more, that there was more hip hop that stood the test of time. I think like as a genre, probably because hip hop is a newer genre, one of the newest. You know, we don't have that 
Like there are reggae songs that I remember being a kid that still play. When they play it, I still feel like I heard it the first time. There are hip hop songs like that also, but I wish we had more hip hop songs that had that kind of longevity. You know, I think about that sometimes myself, bro. And I go through that, like I'll put on an old album and then be like, damn, I know this don't sound good to my nephew. Mm. I know the, the quality, you know, and I think it was because of the equipment we was working with. Mm -hmm. Like, so how Stevie wanted to still sound good. Like we were just working on like turntables and MP3s, experimental drum machines. Mm -hmm. I think I think that may have something to do with the sonic quality of older hip hop that gets lost in translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a way to look at it. That's a way to you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it was the, because you take something like the message, it still go hard. Some of that right. Houdini stuff still go hard. You can still play LL Cool J at a party and young people would like it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's not all hip hop, but when you get into like, more like the kind of um, less budgeted rappers, you know what I'm saying? That, that we really love, like, I got it made, don't sound the same. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm loving this. Let's budget it for half of this. Yo, this this is a little off the top. Well, it's not off the topic, but tell me the importance. The importance well, of having right. a, having a point. The importance of having a great woman by your side. What is the definition of a great woman to you? Selfless, compassionate, very loving, a, a, a firm you know, quality, a firm quality to straighten your ass out when it's needed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I think. Hey, you see? Can you see my woman back there? Yeah. So you know, I, I had to pick her up. So. <laughs> So, my 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 thing is, besides my mother, my woman is the only one that can make me change my mind. Mm. Why is that? And I think, I think that men got to think about, besides just compassion and love and kindness, are we walking in the same purpose? If we don't, if we're not getting along on nothing else, can we get along on why we together? Mm. Our values. Like, I think a lot of time in our community, in our community, we don't check for what kind of values a person has before we mate. Facts. We, we, we. We law, you know, like, what is it to have a great woman? To me, by my side, is a woman who shares my values. And in the sharing of those values, we build outwardly. from We build from the inside out. There you go. My woman, like, my, my wife, my wife, bro, she travels the world with me. We, we travel the world together. Mm -hmm. We think we come up with ideas and, you know, and... We work together. Okay. We we like we raise children together. Like okay. we we love community together. Like like we we in that purpose. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like and so we can figure out all of our disagreements through the values of our purpose. I don't right. think a lot of us do that when we hit and, and when we get in relationships, we don't be clear and we don't be transparent. Mm -hmm. right. I I, pre I appreciate that because like in yourself, both both myself and Chanel, we have great women that 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 are right beside us, man. And they support us and they love us in every endeavor. Even sometimes they get in our ass. I know my <laughs> wife does, but I I know it's necessary and it's needed. And she only wants the best for me, man. Especially mm -hmm. when it comes to my health. Um, my wife has done some remarkable things to keep me alive, man. And. I, I I wouldn't know what to do without her, man. So I love I love the relationship I see with your wife and how y'all travel the world, and I appreciate seeing that, bro. Yeah, for sure, for sure. 
Well, Ron Fest, man, thank you. This has been this has been remarkable, man. I definitely enjoyed this conversation.